A jungle is an area covered in dense forest, usually in a tropical climate. With impenetrable vegetation and teeming with wildlife, we find them along the edges of rainforests. In fact, it's estimated that 6% of the land on Earth is covered in it. Half the planet and animal species on our planet live there, and a lot more as you'd expect to find out. It's not just jungle cats and lost tribes these days. There's a world to discover in these parts of the world, and we're going to do it. 15 Most Mysterious Things Found in the Jungle Snowflake Bugs Insects are the most diverse group of organisms on our planet. There are around 900,000 different kinds of bugs we know of, representing around 80% of the world's species. But there's one particular insect that stands out as particularly special. A plant hopper nymph. It can look like a snowflake, or some say looks like a walking piece of popcorn. There's a reason for this strange appearance. The insect, which can be found in the Amazon rainforest, is covered with waxy white filaments for protection. These nymphs also possess a biological gear mechanism at the base of the hind legs, which keeps the legs in synchrony when the insect jumps. Plant hoppers, small insects that feed on plants and hop like grasshoppers, are typically disguised as leaves or plants in their adult form. But as immature nymphs, many species take on a much less subtle appearance. They're notorious for sprouting waxy filaments that variously resemble optical fibers, afterburners, and bizarre feathery tendrils. For added flair, the filaments oftentimes protrude from the hind end of them. They're not simply decorative, however. The filaments aid in concealment as well as gliding. It looks like a tiny cloud or a piece of popcorn resting on a little insect leg. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Like a scene from an epic movie, such as Jurassic Park, this is the part where the freakishly large serpent turns a helicopter into a chew toy. The truth is, a snake this size could probably swallow this machine whole. In snakes, the lower bones of the jaw are not connected like they are in mammals. At the front, the jaw is attached by a stretchy ligament, which means they can spread apart laterally, increasing the width of the mouth. And in some cases, a snake will swallow its prey whole. The larger question about an image like this is whether or not a snake this size ever existed in the jungle. Jungles have existed on Earth for millions and millions of years. They're the oldest ecosystem on the planet. Maybe it's possible. The reticulated python happens to be the world's longest reptile. It can grow up to 28 feet. This snake, however, is way bigger. This is one animal encounter these people will never forget, if they survive. Any thoughts? What happens next? Leave a comment below with the hashtag Sweet Topic. Square Trees This small town in Panama sits on the second largest inhabited dormant volcano in the world. The volcano's activity ceased about 10,000 years ago. Nonetheless, people have lived in the area for centuries, even with the possible threat of eruption. Besides people living in a volcano crater, the valley is unique because of the weird square trees which grew on the volcanic soil. These are rare cottonwood trees that have been baffling tourists and scientists, and so far, there's no direct explanation why the tree trunks are square with hard right angles. Even the rings of the interior tree grow in a square shape and not the typical circle, making the trees truly stick out in nature's typical curvilinear palette. The Valley of Square Trees is a dangerous choice for a settlement. It's believed that this strange anomaly of nature doesn't occur anywhere else in the world, and that's why the locals and their ancestors regard the tree as extremely sacred. Experts took a few tree seedlings to see if they'll retain the rectangular shape if planted elsewhere. It turned out that the rectangular shape of trees is directly related to the conditions of the valley. When planted in any other location, the trees would have normal circular trunks. These trees exist no place else around the globe. Crocodile Tears In December of 2013, a researcher observed a butterfly and a bee along with a crocodile basking on the banks of a river in northeastern Costa Rica. The insects were simultaneously engaged in tear feeding. Yep, the bugs were drinking crocodile tears. Yet the reptile remained passive during the interactions, not bothered at all. But then the question becomes, what's going on in here? Truth is, the butterfly and the bee were most likely seeking minerals and an extra boost of protein. Although salt is plentiful in the ocean, 
The molecule technically known as sodium chloride is often a rare and valuable resource on land. It remains uncertain what other kinds of nutrients might be in crocodilian tears. While sodium is an essential element for the metabolism and reproduction of these insects, there are also proteins, enzymes, and micronutrients that could also play a role in the fitness of the insects tapping the resource. Future research can explore how common these interactions are, what species are involved, and how important these interactions are for the survival of the species involved. The phenomenon may not be as rare as biologists had assumed, just hard to witness. <laughs> vampire plant. We've heard of blood-sucking vampire humans, we know of vampire bats, but did you know there's a plant that likes blood too? A parasitic vine nicknamed the vampire plant sounds scary enough, but new research is finding that the dotter plant is even more devious than previously thought. The dotter earned its sinister nickname for the way it sucks nutrients and water from its hosts. Okay, so it's not blood, but still. Researchers have known for years about its theft of water, sugar, and small molecules from host plants. Now they're finding that the vampire plant removes large molecules too, specifically messenger RNA, the molecule that helps in protein synthesis. The RNAs are like internal memos. They've sent from the exclusive office to the production floor that give directions. For these to be stolen by the parasites is really interesting. If the dotter is exchanging those molecules, that raises interesting hypothesis about how the parasitic plant might be controlling or interacting with the host. The most intriguing idea is the plant may not only be stealing these memos, it may be writing some of its own. It's either leaking or sending its own messenger RNA into the host. Plastic Castle Located on the island of Boca del Toro, Panama, the Plastic Bottle Village by Robert Bezo is an initiative that seeks to reduce plastic waste and reuse it by incorporating it into the construction of homes. The four-story, 46-foot castle constructed in 2017 by the Plastic King is fabricated from around 40,000 plastic bottles. It boasts four guest rooms, a feasting area, and a viewing platform on the roof. In 2021, Bezo opened an extension, a dungeon made from 10,000 plastic bottles featuring six cells that can sleep up to 16 guests. The castle and dungeon are part of an ecological plastic bottle village which features many other buildings built from the same discarded materials that he's collected from the Boca del Toro Islands. Originally from Montreal in Canada, the Plastic King came here several years ago, spearheading the Boca's recycling program in 2012, where he, some volunteers, and a few part-time workers made a positive change in the cleanliness of the island beaches in town. During that time, he came across a staggering amount of recyclable materials, estimating that he had over one million bottles accumulated during the period of one and a half years, which he then used to build a series of structures. Bamboo drifting. It originated during the Qin Dynasty, more than 200 BC, as a means of transport. In fact, the region it was born in was renowned for its production in very precious and expensive wood, and it was greatly demanded by the emperors in the north of China. The problem was that they didn't have big enough boats to carry the logs, so they rewarded citizens to stand and sail on one log each in order to transport them to the first destination that had adequate boats to continue the journey. The art of bamboo drifting was born, and it's breathtakingly beautiful and original. It's typical of this region in southwestern China, and it's extremely unique. Before a video of this magical dance was posted online, it was an unknown art. The biggest challenge with bamboo drifting is that the surface of the water is in constant movement, so keeping your body balanced requires double the effort. For every movement you make, your body shakes so you have to be able to control it. Otherwise, you'll fall into the river. As time passed, riders became more experienced and competitive, challenging each other in balancing games and acrobatic movements. Even when in later years transporting the logs on the river was no longer a necessity, the residents never gave up their hobby. World's Longest Water Slide Although nothing is as fun on a hot summer day, there's a downside to water slides. You climb dozens of steps to reach the slide's entry point, huffing and puffing your way to the top, only to find yourself floundering about in the exit pool mere seconds later. The effort usually always exceeds the reward, at least where time's concerned. It's totally fun, but still. 
This won't be the case with a new water slide that's just opened in Malaysia. Stretching a whopping 3,645 feet long, the ride shakes through the undergrowth at Penang's Escape Theme Parks and it's claimed to have smashed the previous record for the world's longest tube water slide held by a theme park in New Jersey. Unlike the New Jersey version, which is inflatable, the new slide is made of fiber-reinforced polymer and is a permanent structure attached to steel poles. And huffing and puffing won't be part of the experience. Visitors access the slide via a cable car chairlift. The slide offers a four-minute ride that meanders its way down a 229-foot slope. The slide itself took eight months to build and uses 145,505 pounds of steel. Unlike many water slides, it's a permanent structure. You're transported to the top by Malaysia's only chairlift. And when it comes to size, it has no rivals. Mosquito Heaven An experimental green housing project in a Chinese megacity promised prospective residents a life in a vertical forest with manicured gardens on every balcony. All 826 apartments were sold out too, according to the project's estate agent. The project in the southwestern city was built in 2018 with every private balcony designed to provide space for plants to grow. But the eight towers have been overrun by their own plants and invaded by mosquitoes. Instead of a modern eco-paradise, the towers look like the set of a desolate, post-apocalyptic film. Residents at the housing complex who looked forward to living in a vertical forest found themselves in a veritable hell, with mosquitoes swarming their eco-paradise. Plants have almost entirely swallowed up some neglected balconies, with branches hanging over railings all over the towers. Paper was seen taped over some of the windows that were still visible behind the overgrown plants, and only a handful of families have moved into Forest Garden because of an infestation of mosquitoes. Some residents appear to have braved the mosquitoes, a handful of balconies had pruned plants and outdoor furniture, and lights turned on inside the apartments. <laughs> Underground City Deep in the Cambodian jungle, in Asia, lie the remains of a vast medieval city which was hidden for centuries. New archaeological techniques are now revealing its secrets, including an elaborate network of temples and boulevards, and sophisticated engineering. Today, Cambodia is famous for these buildings. The largest, Angkor Wat, constructed around 1150, remains the biggest religious complex on Earth, covering an area four times larger than Vatican City. But back in the 1860s, Angkor Wat was virtually unheard of, beyond local monks and villagers. The notion that this great temple was once surrounded by a city of nearly a million people was entirely unknown. It took over a century of grueling archaeological fieldwork to fill in the map. The lost city slowly began to reappear, street by street, but even then significant blanks remained. But an even older city hidden deep in the jungle beyond. An international team mapped hundreds of square miles. Their secret? A sophisticated remote sensing technology that's revolutionizing archaeology. The archaeologists found undocumented cityscapes etched onto the forest floor, with temples, highways, and waterways spreading across the landscape. Fake Rainforest In 1991, a group of eight people entered a giant dome, a closed system biosphere intended to be self-supporting. They called themselves Biospherians wore space-age jumpsuits and planned to stay two years, growing their own crops, recycling waste and air, and performing an experiment to see if it would be possible for human life to be sustained in such an environment. The structure was called Biosphere 2, and it was a huge media sensation. But it flopped. At its conclusion, the project was mostly painted by media coverage as a farce and a failure. Columbia University assumed management of the facility in 1995 and used it to run experiments until 2003. The University of Arizona took full ownership of the structure in 2011. Today, Biosphere 2 serves as a laboratory for controlled scientific studies, an arena for scientific discovery and discussion, and a far-reaching provider of public education. In the simulated rainforest, scientists are studying how plants cope with high temperature and drought to better understand how climate change may affect forests. Outside, researchers are growing plants beneath solar panels as they explore innovative ways to grow nutritious food crops while increasing energy output. Patagonia Penguin Nothing in nature is 100%, but loyalty would be a rule for penguins. Each spring, 
These penguins migrate from the Brazilian coast to Patagonia. They spend the winter in warmer climates, and then they come to Patagonia to nest. Every year, they return to the same nest, and Patagonian penguins remain faithful to their mates. This penguin, however, named Dindim, has an unusual friendship, a human one. This most unlikely friendship started over a decade ago when this man found the rare animal covered in oil near his home on an island off the coast of Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. After a week of rehabilitation, the kind man attempted to release the penguin back into the wild. However, Dindim had already formed a family bond with his rescuer and wouldn't leave. He stayed for about a year, and then, just after he changed his coat with new feathers, he disappeared. And since then, this little penguin swims 5,000 miles back to the beach every year in order to be reunited with the man who saved its life. Dindim definitely knows where he's going when he arrives. He goes, by himself, to the very spot in this man's yard. The retiree has become part of Dindim's family and vice versa. It sounds like something out of a famous fable, but it's true. A penguin-human friendship. <coughs> tree that bleeds metal. This tree is a rainforest shrub and is one of about 75 other trees that were recently discovered to be hyperaccumulators. What does that mean? Well, this term is used in the case for the accumulation of nickel in these plants, the plant that bleeds metal. Aside from this, there does not seem to be much information at all about the species other than the fact that it can grow fairly tall with a whitish bark. This shrub can be found in the southern end and northern parts of New Caledonia, an island east of Australia, as well as all along the east coast where the soils are heavy in nickel. Often in dense human forests, the population size of the species is not yet known. While plants need a small amount of nickel to survive, too much of it is generally seen as toxic. However, these shrubs have about 25% nickel as dry weight. This is so high that the metal seeps out in the form of a bluish-green sap. The tree's unusual affinity for nickel first came to light in the 1970s, and research into other hyperaccumulator plants have increased since then. Scientists are hopeful that hyperaccumulators could be used to clean soil where there's been a buildup of toxic material due to human activity. <coughs> Mystical Blue River There's a myth of this famous river originated from the indigenous tribes of the area prior to the Spanish conquest of Costa Rica. They believed there were otherworldly entities who influenced the forest and those who resided there. The story of how Rio Celeste got its magnificent color is simple and sweet. It was believed that the gods painted the sky blue and used the river to wash their paintbrushes. And to this day, the opaque and glowing turquoise water of Rio Celeste is the most beautiful natural phenomenon in Costa Rica. And only in recent times has the mystery finally been solved. Many believe that the water was fluorescent blue due to the presence of certain bacteria and volcanic minerals. Some thought that the presence of copper, or the combination of calcium carbonate and sulfur, was responsible for the chemical reaction that made the water neon blue. Turns out, it's actually an optical illusion. When they took samples, the water appeared transparent in the test tubes. They also discovered that the water contained aluminum mixed with silicon and oxygen. The rocks on the bottom of Rio Celeste were covered in this white mineral, and it reflects a bluish color. Thousand Waterfalls This insane water feature is called a waterfall, but it's more like a thousand waterfalls put together, which is why the name loosely translated from the local Java language meaning many waterfalls. And now, Tumpak Suwu Waterfall is becoming famous as one of the most amazing waterfalls in East Java, and it may even be the coolest waterfall in all of Indonesia and Southeast Asia. These falls thunder down into a horseshoe-shaped jungle ravine that looks like something right out of Jurassic Park. The end result is a natural wonder like no other, as if the half-moon waterfalls aren't unique enough as in an active volcano that doubles as the tallest mountain in Java looms in the distance. Samiru is nearly constantly erupting, with volcanic activity being a regular occurrence. Your first start here is a panorama point that serves as the main overlook where you can see the falls from above. Plus, no hiking is required to see it from the overlook, just a short little walk from the parking area. The waterfall is super photogenic and it's easy to see how it became known as the Thousand Waterfalls of East Java. If you have time to explore the area, there's a two-day trip that visits a desert-like ash wasteland and you'll get an even closer look at the volcano. <coughs> Abandoned Hotel 
Known for its unique architecture in the middle of the treetops of the Amazon rainforest, it's hosted personalities such as the former president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, Bill Gates, Queen Sophia of Spain, lots of dignitaries, and countless personalities from around the world. This was the largest jungle hotel in the world. It ended its operations permanently in 2016. At its height, the hotel had various tours available within the forest, such as canoe trips, jungle walks, piranha fishing, and visiting native villages. There were swimming pools and observational towers that stretched 134 feet above the trees. Visitors could also observe the meeting of the waters where the Rio Negro and the Solimos River met. The hotel's history says that the idea came from Jacques Cousteau when he met the hotel's founder on a trip the structural idea originated with the techniques used by natives of the area for building on the edge of rivers. The first building was opened in 1985, but closed its doors in 2016. Despite the abandonment, the facilities still impress with an architecture totally adapted to the forest and the river. With all the advances, it would make this hotel again a unique hotel worldwide. If you were nervous about visiting the jungle before, hopefully you won't be now after seeing these videos. Then again, that's the thing about exploring jungles, you never know what you're gonna get. That's the fun part.